Uh, okay, it's time for Ask GMBN, so don't forget to send your questions in to ask at gmbn.com. And of course, you can leave them down in the comments section below. Now, let's get started with this week's show. First question is from Pavel Kotkin. Um, it's a good one for you, Doddy. Uh, current bike is a giant XTC has a press fit type bottom bracket, mm -hmm. uh, but his previous bike was Shimano threaded BB, um, and he has all the tools for installation on that. Doesn't want to buy a press fit uh, removal kit. So would it make any sense to change the type of BB? I don't think you can. You can't really do no. that now. You're kind of stuck with it. It's a bit of an annoyance, but that's what yeah. these new standards always, always mean. So stick with it, basically. Yeah, stick yeah. with it, Pavel, or change your bike. But that seems crazy. Quite so radical. Stick with it. Yeah. Right, um, Ty Torbenheim says he's new to MTB. Um, are there any MT-specific tips uh, related to big riders? So he's a bit of a Clydesdale. Oh, okay. It's a yeah. big dude. Six foot six, Ooh. 240 pounds. Oh, massive dude, uh, yeah. He's currently on a hand-me-down Trek 4300. Okay, so um, he's just getting started. Yeah, that name rips off the tongue, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Uh, 4300. Um, How would you say that? 4300. 4300? 4300. That's, right. oh, That's right. what he's yeah. on. Um, uh, plans to continue to put the work in uh, with regards to foundational skills, but hoping you could give him some insightful tips. Oh, I don't even know where to start. It's hard, isn't yeah, it? Because this... a big bike, like a big dude, you need a big bike. You need a long wheelbase. You know, you're tall. Yeah. Um, and equally, if you're a small rider, you do have to come down to a smaller Complete bike to get, the, around, yeah. to get a bike that's going to work. And Jack's not in because he's a he's a he's vertically challenged. Vertically challenged. Yeah. Um, and your wheelbase <laughs> gets shorter, of course, and it makes the bike more twitchy. So it's really trying the one that works for you. The bike you're telling me about, though, the Trek 4300. Um, I don't know how long that's going to stand up to uh, six foot six. Six, six two hundred and forty pound yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Um, nice bike. Nothing wrong with it, but might yeah. be struggling on. Yeah, because you said you clipping your head on trails because just because you're I always high. struggle. Yeah, I tend to use uh, an enduro pack, fanny pack, whatever yeah. you want to call it, because I'm always ducking under trees and stuff. So fed up of catching my my regular packs. It's a tough word so, out there for the big rider. But that's a good idea actually to do yeah. some videos for the taller guy and also for the smaller riders because it's yes. such a radically different setup. Yes, I could so, do that video because I have one vertically challenged and one not at all vertically yeah, challenged. Not, we'll do that, so keep an eye out for yes, that. You are, Jack. Um, John Graham says, how much more pedal effort is needed for lower tyre pressures? Hmm. Um, good question. Recently rode with high pressure, 35 pounds front and back. Pedaling was easier, corners were scary. Was the easy pedaling just in his head? No, no definitely not. No. Um, firmer tyre pressure will certainly make you go faster on smoother surfaces um, and obviously gives you less grip on rough surfaces. Mm. There's something you've got to bear in mind. There, there is a trade-off, obviously, between the two. If you're running a firmer tyre pressure off-road, it's not always as fast on rough surfaces because you'll actually be bouncing off the trail. Yeah. So that forward momentum actually bounces you off. Slightly softer tyre enables that forward momentum to carry on. Yeah. So it's a good correlation there. Yeah, yeah, and it's not the first time we've thought about this stuff. Take a quick look at this, our video of soft tyres versus hard. Tyres are your only contact point between the bike and the ground beneath you. But what if you've got the wrong tyre pressure? If they're too hard or if they're too soft? It sounds like a versus to me, I think. <laughs> Okay, um, he, uh, 5351 says, um, the thread on one of my pedals and one side of the crank has possibly cross-threaded. Uh, how can I fix this and do I need to replace the crank and pedal? Um, okay, well, it's hard to see without seeing it in the flesh, but usually the pedal's threads will be well, harder than the, the crank mm. itself, which tends to be a softer alloy. So I find it hard to believe if the crank, uh, if the pedal's actually yeah. threaded, like, you'd be very unlucky if that's the case. Uh, if it is a crank you, and you've just sort of uh, cross-threaded the threads, you can get them re-tapped. But if you pull them out, then pretty much it's a new crank. Yeah, and I hope it. I mean, that's um, pretty common thread in Yeah, the, it does happen. You know, the crank yeah. arm and you could, yeah, like I say, get it tapped through. Yeah. Can fix it. Okay, Micah Micah asks, uh, what can you think about making a dropper post mudguard? Last week, two of my friends almost had their new dropper post ruined after a few hours of riding in wet, muddy conditions. Oh, you know what I have seen, um, you've probably seen this too, is that where people are using like a section of inner tube and just using it like a rubber sock goes over the top, protects yeah, all of yeah. the moving parts. Like a shock boot sort of thing. Shock boot, yeah. yeah. I mean, so that's actually a pretty quick fix to that. I've seen a few of those. Um, that's a good way to protect it, but it shouldn't ruin your 
um, drop a post on a no. muddy ride, but no. you know, there's you should look like, after them. Jet wash it off afterwards. And yeah, and it. spray some water displacing sort of lubricant on it afterwards yeah. just to make yeah. sure any water sort of just disappears. Yeah, but have a look at the old uh, rubber boots. Rubber booties. Drop a post booties. Andreas Kaschletner says, um, he's got two questions actually. First one, if I swap my chain ring for a bigger um, or smaller one, do I need to adjust the chain as well? E.g. if I swap my 28.2 for a 32, do I have to lengthen my chain? Um, probably get away with it with that much. If yeah. you're going to extreme lengths, you know, going up from a 32 to a 38, then yeah, you probably want to add, add in an extra link or so. Yeah. Um, the best way to check that is just try the range of gears and just see how tight it looks. Yeah. But no. generally not. Look, the old trailer usually takes up the slack. Right, yeah. Second question from Andreas. Is he allowed two questions? Yeah, go on. All right. Yeah. Um, should the rebound on the rear shock in general be much slower than on the fork? Um, there is no general. It's kind of a personal right. preference thing. Uh, you'll find with your fork and shock, there'll be a guide baseline setting for your mm. weight, which you'll be able to find out on the manufacturer's website. Um, personally, I like a faster fork and a slightly slower shock out back. Yeah. Um, it is up to you, really. Yeah, I definitely prefer that. You know, yeah. a nice quick front end. Yeah. Um, it's weird though, it's, it's suspension settings are such a strange thing. Going with those base levels is really important and then you do have to start experimenting with it. Yeah. Um, I do know that a few people have uh, had a bit of a play with Aaron Gwynn's bike, for example. Mm -hmm. And apparently, if you're not Aaron Gwynn, it feels like a disaster. Because oh, it it's so hard, mm. so, so hard. So it all comes down to personal preference. And, uh, and what you get good results well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, if it's not comfortable, try backing off a bit of that rebound or compression damping. Yeah. You know, it's all about how it feels for you out on the trails. Yeah. Um, Enoch Castleberry asks, I have a short holiday coming up at the end of August. Lucky Where shall I go for my mountain bike holiday? Um, I need to rent a bike and I need to be able to ride the trails from the hotel. Yep, that's the dream. Um, lift access would be a bonus. I'm an XC kind of rider who lives in Dubai, preferably somewhere under an eight hour flight. Wow, that's just a, a huge place realm yeah, of places like, to go. Wow, where should we yeah. go? Where would you go? Um, XE kind of rider, I would probably just aim for the French Alps, you know, yeah, Swiss Alps. Yeah. It's just so much riding there. You can just Jack you can Clarkson. traverse all day long, just put in huge routes using chairlifts to get up. You've still got some climbing, lots yeah, of yeah. flat riding to do as well as the descending. Yeah, oh, I think I would go maybe Austria. Um, there's some mm. flow trails in Austria that I've always yeah, wanted to popular ride. Place, yeah, yeah, and I, I really fancy a a few days on some flow trails. Um, Sailback, of Sailback course, into Glen, is, yeah. is a really, really amazing spot where you've mm. got all of the action going on. So that's probably a good suggestion to check out. And you know what? We went there last we did. year. Yeah. Scotty Lachlan took a run over to uh, Sailback and he did the Big Five. So take a look at this. We are here in Sailback, the home of the Big Five, and we're going to go for an epic ride. But it'd be pretty boring on my own. Oi, oi! Hello, mate. You got your Joker card? Uh, Let's go. <laughs> Scott and Brendan are about to embark on the Big Five. But what is the Big Five? It's an epic ride around the valleys of Salbach Hinterglim that uses five lifts and five trails all linked with single track. 65 kilometers long with 5,000 meters of descending. Uh, Nicholas Olison, my saddle started to creak very loudly after I've adjusted the position. Could it be I've just tightened it too much or is it finally time to replace my four-year-old saddle? Now, now, we discussed this earlier on, didn't we? Yeah. And we sum this up by what you're hearing is dryness. Uh, That's what it sounds like. <laughs> so we think for well, the rails, you're saying... For the rails, I'd use a compound, yes. which has got like the fine grit stuff in it to yeah. stop it moving. Yeah, and then and then grease on the other uh, moving parts. Um, and Cleaning it is most important. Though. Yeah, and keeping it clean. Um, and you'll probably find that just goes away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you're unlucky, it will be the rails in the actual seat, though. Um, then it is time to replace your seat. No, nope, I can't sense any bad luck here. Okay. I think it's just a bit of grease. Steve Dickens <laughs> says, um, I'd like to fit a dropper post to my giant V2, VT1. Um, as there is access to the bottom of the seat tube, could I fit an integrated uh, cable dropper post? Okay. Um, rather than an externally routed cable one. Yeah, so that's, that's got like a, an extended seat mast on that bike. Right. Uh, yeah, technically I think you could, but You'd have to measure this very carefully to make sure none of it catches. So if you let your shock, let the air out of the shock mm -hmm. and compress the back end of the bike, and then with your existing seat post in there, if you push that down far, you'll see how much clearance you can have. Basically, right. if you can imagine right. that. Yeah. So yeah, you don't want it to foul on, on the shock. And yeah. Again, it's even more important with the cable coming at the bottom because you can actually rip that off if, you, if it contacts. 
Um, yeah. You need to measure that yourself and check that. Ooh, fine tuning coming yeah. up. Um, Dave K says, I was silly enough to have a fast crash down a fire road and ended up breaking my jaw in three places. Oh, yeah. horror show. Yeah. Um, how long should I take, how long should it take a mere mortal like, uh, like Dave K to get back on a bike? I don't think well, there's any pressure. No, I mean, I mean, we've got this kind of issue going on here at GM, in GMBN at the moment because mm. Neil's smashed his jaw up um, mm. and he's dealing with a bit of a wired shut at yeah. the moment. The um, thing is with stuff like this is there is no rush to get back, is there? When, yeah. when you're ready, dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's uh, obviously good advice from your doctor, but also when you feel ready and confident. Um, there's nothing wrong once a bit of healing time's gone past to go for a like gentle roll on your bike, see how mm. you're feeling. But obviously, with something like a, a damage to your jaw, yeah. you're going to know pretty quick if it's uh, hurting. If it feels right. Not, yeah. I, I always say with injuries, and I, I've got to be honest, not I'm not taking my own advice in the past. Um, is don't rush back. You know, give it time. Yeah, take time. Um, but I tell you what, why don't we avoid it altogether by watching this video on how to not crush. <laughs> We all fall off our bikes occasionally. You guys send in your videos for fails and bails in the Dirt Shed Show. Whoa! Ah. But today, we're gonna to look at how to avoid the most common reasons for falling off your bike. Quick fire round! Okay, Ivan Mahon, uh, can I pair a 140mm travel fork to a bike with 120 in the rear? I say yes. Yeah. He says, yeah, any more than that, your BB will go high, but good, good. Right, uh, Jambo Pro says, why not 29er plus um, downhill bike or even a 20 si 7.5 plus downhill bike? Oh. Uh, probably because they're supporting the tyres, because the higher yeah. the tyre is, the less support they've got for pushing into turns. Yeah, 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 I'm burping all the way down the it's hill. It's nothing to do with being against the size, it just doesn't work for that format. Yeah. Uh, Felix Dresmo says, uh, what is the best shifter, Shimano SLX or DRXT? Dior XT. Well, Jim, they're both good, to be fair. Yeah. yeah. Um, only bro game, zero, zero. I'm 14 years old. Is a 760mm bar too big? No, I don't think so. So, um, I mean, you know, there's guys out there riding 800, you know, mm. so you're, you're about right, I reckon. Joshua says, why does my front wheel sound squeaky when I get on and ride? Uh, could be a brakes, but uh, in this case, I reckon it might be the little rubber seals. If they yes. dry out, they sweep, sweep, sweep. <laughs> <laughs> so check that out. Doddy solved it. <laughs> uh, Nicholas Olison, can I run a three pool cassette in my DT Swiss wheel with a two pool system? No. 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 That's right. Yeah. Simple answer. Um, Bob Johnson, why do downhillers have their seat about halfway when they can just put it all the way down? Uh, okay, yeah, they kind of want it out of the way, but they need it for a bit of support, a bit of pedaling. Yeah. It's actually good for balance to pinch between the legs sometimes. Yeah, if you watch them ride, they're really relying on that saddle. It's a really yeah. important part. Uh, Tommy Holroyd, is it possible to put tubeless sealant and a tube in a tyre in case you blow the tube? Would it then work as tubeless without having to stop? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think you can do it, but you've got to make sure the outer tyre still pops into place. Yeah, and are we talking that's about good. a lot of weight there? We are. Yeah. Um, it's good for Mega Avalanche, actually, to have a second choice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, a second chance, either. Good, good, cool. Yeah. Um, PJS said, says, could you make another video with Maya Wojowska? I would like to hear Blake crushing his tongue saying Maya's last name. It is hard to say. I'd like, I'd like to, to see him say that as well. Wojowska. 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 I hope yeah. that's right. Yeah. yeah. If not, we apologise. But yeah, I'd love to see yeah. Blake take that on. Uh, Robert Paulson, he wrote in last oh, week actually yes. about this. Yeah. Uh, just an update, so the Stash 5 has already got a deposit on it. Good man. <laughs> Sweet. Um, so I decided to put in a little bit more cash. Uh, I've up upgraded to a Stash 7 for just under $1,600. I'm going to do a bit more hunting, see if I can get a better deal. And I really want a GMBN sticker for my first sticker. I'll send some pictures. Send them into Bike Vault. Love yeah, to see that. Send them into Bike Vault. Oh, yeah, yeah, that would be a brilliant bike. Yeah, good man. Uh, good job. And that was quick fire round. We did yeah. it. We Happy made it days. Yeah. Yes. So each week we get some great Great, correct me if I'm wrong videos. If you want to send yours in, then send it to ask at gmbn.com and title it, correct me if I'm wrong, and we'll take a look. So let's get into this week's videos. Hmm. Yeah, first up is uh, Nicholas Olsen. Yes. He's been in there. Yeah, I've tonight. heard that name. Uh, so my friend's taking on a double jump today. He wants to know what to improve on the jumps. Um, ignore my gibberish Danish language. <laughs> I don't need to do that. Right, coming in fast. Fast. Ooh. Ooh, Ooh, do you know what? Of, there was a bit of lean there, Yeah, there? I, I would yeah. slow down a bit yeah. and concentrate more on getting the bike up yeah. rather yeah. than using speed to conquer. Yeah, and I think as well, maybe start on a slightly shorter tabletop jump with a maybe slightly bigger takeoff because then yeah. you'll get a bit more height and you'll have time to manage the bike in the air mm. on that where you've got a little bit out of line. 
you know, it's, once it starts going one way, it's really hard to bring it back. So. You'll be going down with a ship before you know it. Yes, it's yeah. <laughs> good summary. Yeah. Don't forget to send your questions in to ask at gmbn.com. And of course, you can leave them in the comment section down below. Yeah, and in the meantime, you want to find out what is the ultimate bike. So this is a really good video. This is GCN versus GMBN. Yeah. Click down here. That's a really good watch. And if you want to perfect your setup, then take a look at this video on how to set up your cockpit. And don't forget to hit the globe to subscribe. Which means there's only one more thing to do. Yeah, what was that? Give us a thumbs oh, up. That was it. That's the one.